All right, well, let's, uh, let's pray. Well, well, first of all, before we pray, uh, let me tell you, right, the message for today changed this morning. Um, that doesn't always happen, but whenever it happens like that, it, all, it happens typically because, and it has happened, I think, like twice now. And every time I will hear a testimony afterwards and someone will say it was for me. And the message changed this morning. So, and I, I think sometimes it happens that way simply because I have to be reminded not to rely on myself. Um, and not to be relied on the ability to be articulate. But instead to rely on the Spirit of God. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you've done. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your children. Heavenly Father, we ask you this morning, speak to us. You know the way we hear. You know the way that we receive. Father, speak to us in a language that we understand. Open our ears to hear, our hearts to listen and receive. Father, may you alone be glorified. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. So today, we're looking at value. It's the same title, just different passages now. Today we're looking at value. Let's go to the book of Matthew 13. Matthew 13, 1, 3, in case my accent made it hard to understand. Matthew 13. All right, let's start from verse, uh, what should we do? Okay, let's start from verse 24. Let's look at verse 24. Matthew 13, 24. So this is what Jesus says. He says, he put another parable before them saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sold good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore again, then the weeds appeared also, and the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? Verse 29. And he said, no, least in gathering the weeds, you root up the wheat along with them. Verse 30, let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to, the, to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. All right. So this is a parable that Jesus says that represents the kingdom. Of heaven. So let's break down this parable quickly because Jesus actually explains the parable, but let's look at some things that we can get before we look at the explanation that Jesus gives to the parable. In verse 24, he says the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man. He uses a man, one man, who sowed good seed in his field. Now, there are two things we know about this man so far he owns a field. And he decided that some seeds were good enough to sow. Okay? This man saw some seeds and said, this seed is what I want to sow, and he sowed them. The man defined what was good. Okay? He decided, these seeds are good, I want to sow them in my field. The field belongs to the man, he decided the seeds were, were good, so he sowed them. Now look at verse 25. It says, and while his men were sleeping... It says, his enemy came and sowed weeds um, among the wheat and went away. Why would his enemy do this? Because he's his enemy. <laughs> Why would someone just go out of his way to go sow evil seeds in a man's you know, garden or in a man's land? Because he's his enemy. He's his enemy. So whatever the man wants to do, the enemy wants to do the opposite. He wants to destroy whatever the man is building. So as the man sowed good seed, he came and sowed evil seed in the same field. Not a different field, in the same field. Now, what's funny about this is, of course, the man doesn't stop the enemy. 
the, the, this example says his servants were sleeping. <laughs> it says the enemy came and sowed. As you continue reading, you find out that the man knew, but he doesn't stop his enemy. But let's continue. So, so when the plants came up and bore again, then the weeds appeared also. Now, what's interesting about this, look at that verse 26. It occurred to me this morning, like I said, you know, probably a few minutes before, before the service started, of what the last part of 26 said. Look at it. So when the plants came up and what? Bore, produced. I want you to understand that the servants of this man did not know the difference between the weed and the, and the good seed until the good seed produced. So look at it. It says, when the plants came up and bore again, then the weeds appeared also because they were growing together. Now, if you notice, I've, how many of you have ever, ever seen wheat? A wheat, uh, a bushel of wheat. Have you ever seen it? Okay. Uh, depending on what stage of growth they are in, they look like weed. They don't look very appetizing until they start producing, you know, until it turns into like a whole bushel. But they look like weed. So it says, came up and bore again, it says, then the weed appeared also. Now there was distinction between the wheat and the wheat. Why? Because the wheat produced more wheat. And the weed could not. Look at verse 27. Then the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, at this point now, after they've seen the difference, Master, did you not sow good seed in that field? Because now they see the difference between good seed and bad seed. Question, what made one seed good? I think we already answered it, but let me see if anybody remembers. What made one seed good? Yeah, the farmer chose, right? Beautiful. And if you look at the good seed, the good seed produces more, first of all, of its kind, number one, but it is useful to the farmer. The wheat, uh, 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 the wheat is not. The wheat is. With wheat, you can produce bread. You can make bread with, with wheat, right? You can make uh, cereal. You can make... Um, even, um, you know, I just found this recently. Uh, what's it called? Um, what's, this, what's it called? Yeah, I can't remember now. Before the end of the message, I'll tell you what you can make with it. <laughs> but there's so many, um, there's so many things you can make with wheat. You know, you, you can uh, create Meals that people eat. So for the farmer, it is useful. But the weeds are not useful to him. They have no meaning for the farmer. So the servant says, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? How are there weeds here? Because we know when you went into the field, you would not sow weeds. We know you would not do evil in your field. So that was not, so, so what is happening here, Master? What is going on? We know you sowed good seed. How are we now finding wheat? Because we know that was not you. Then here's what he says. He said to them, an enemy has done this. So the servant says to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? I said, let's pluck out all the weed. But he said, no, least in gathering the wheat, you also root up the wheat along with it. Let's go to Matthew 7. We're going to continue. So just, we're seeing Matthew 13 today, but let's look at Matthew 7. Okay, we're there. Let's look at one verse 15. It says, this is Jesus Christ speaking and giving us warnings. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their what? By their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree produces good fruits, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot produce or cannot bear bad fruits, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. 
Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their what? By their fruits. Christ never tells us to recognize who is following him by what they say or how they walk. Not even how they dress. He says by their fruits. By their fruits. By what they produce. Now, sometimes what you produce shows up in how you speak, but people can fake how they speak. There are people that are very calculated in how they speak. Right? They won't say certain things because, oh, I'm not in that environment to say it. Oh, I'm in church, so I can't use the F word here. But outside in front of their friends that use the F word, they will use the F word. Why? Because, hey, they are very calculated. Every space requires a different kind of, kind of speech. So when he's talking about fruits, he's talking about more than that. A seed does not control the fruit it produces. All it needs, it produces what it has in it. Are you following me? If you feed it and water it with right sunlight and the grace of God, it will produce. The seed does not say, I cannot produce that. Why? Because whatever is in it, it will bring out. If the seed is dead, it will produce nothing. But if it has life, it will produce something. Does that make sense? It doesn't control what it produces. So many times we find out who we are when we are not in control. When you're in control of things, right, you can decide what to do at any time, right? I will do this, I will do that, that, that. because everything, you're in control. When control is taken out of your hand, how do you react? If I walk up to you now and I smack in your face, right? For a second there, you will lose control. Now, you may come back to you and say, okay, I'm in church. But most of us will not even, depending on where you are, that control is gone. And who you are will show up. <laughs> exactly. Try Jesus, don't try me. <laughs> but, I, but I thought, <laughs> uh, I thought you were supposed to reflect this light. Okay, but let's continue. You know, I know it's so funny. I actually heard uh, it was supposed to be a Christian artist that sang that song. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay. Let, let, let's continue. All right. So we see, now let's go back to that. We're looking at Matthew 13. We're still here. So, so let's, we're, we're going to breathe. We're going to take in this, this passages today. Just, you know, highlight what you want to highlight. Go back home and study these things for yourself. Because you might not get everything right now, but go back and study it. The word of God is alive. It's alive. All right, verse 29. Says, and he said, no, list in gathering the weeds, you root up the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the, the weeds first and bind them into bundles to be burned. And gather the wheat into my barn. Now, what we see in verse 29, the reason why the weeds are not gathered immediately is because of the wheat. I want you to understand. The reason why the weeds are not gathered immediately is because of the, of the wheat. It's because of the wheat. For the sake of the wheat. Now, let's jump to 36 of the same passage. Now, let's watch Jesus explain this passage to us. Verse 36. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Because they want to know. Verse 37, he answered, the one who sold the good seed is the son of man. She says, the, the man who sold the good seed is I, Jesus Christ. The field is the world. And the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. It says the harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. It says just as the weeds are gathered and burned in fire, so it will be at the end of the age. 
the Son of Man will send his angels and they will gather out of the kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers. Verse 42. And throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Verse 43. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. So just at the end, Jesus Christ says, <laughs> the person that has the ears, let them what? Hear. All right, so let's break down what Christ says. Verse 36. First of all, the disciples come to him and they say, hey, because the parable, that parable that we just read, you know, without context and explanation, it would go over a lot of people's heads. Even our heads, even though we have the entire New Testament, I am sure if Christ never explained these parables, people will have different definition of what it means. Oh, that man is actually a man of God, and they will have different things. That man would not be Jesus. He would just be another apostle or another evangelist. But here, Christ shows us that that man is actually him. And he says, the one who sows the good seed. He says, so he sowed the good seed on the earth. He says, the field is what? The world. So he sowed the good seed in the world. He put it there. The good seed did not sow itself. The good seed did not sow itself. All right, well, I think next week we'll explore some of that more. It says, the field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. So those that are God's own. It says, those are the good seed. It says, the weeds are the sons of the evil one. So we see two sons there. Two children on the same field, which is earth. There is no third child. I want you to understand. There is no child in the middle. There is no child that oh, doesn't belong to either one or belongs to both of them. There is none. It says there are only two children here. One belongs to God. One belongs to the enemy. That's it. One belongs to the evil one. And then it says, and the enemy who saw them is the devil. It says the harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. So Christ is saying at the end of the age, this is what will happen the evil ones will be separated from the good ones. He says, I will send my angels to make that separation happen. Because I have put my identity on the good ones. They are now sons of the kingdom. As I am the son of God, so they become sons of God. They have an identity. Then those ones that don't have that sign or that mark on their head will be destroyed. Now, if you know a little bit of the whole testament, you know that that's what happened to the children of Israel in Egypt. Right? Christ said, put a, or, or God said, put a sign on the, on the doorpost. And when the angel passes over, if he sees a sign, it will pass over you. That sign is a reflection of the identity of Christ in your home, in you. And then it says, Now look at verse 41. Look at 41. I think it's interesting. It says, The Son of Man will send his angels and they will gather out of his what? Kingdom. Wait, I thought this book were on earth. Let's look at Psalm 24. I thought they were on earth. It says, Out of his what? Kingdom. Psalm 24. Let's look at from verse 1. Psalm 24, verse 1. It says, the earth is the Lord's and the what? Fullness thereof. It says, the world and those who dwell within. It says, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. So I want you to understand that though the enemy is the prince of the air and uh, Adam sold his birthright and gave the keys to the kingdoms of the world, to the enemy. God is still in control. He still owns everything. 
it is still his kingdom. Because he created it for himself. So whatever we're seeing right now is for a short time. And at the end of everything, it will revert back to the owner. He will kick people out of his kingdom at the end of the age. He will cleanse his kingdom at the end of the age. But let's continue. And it says, and he will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin. Look at that. He will gather out of his kingdom. He will take those things in his kingdom that have messed it up. Every, and all lawbreakers. It says, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is a warning. It's a warning. It says, then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him, what? Hear. Sometimes when we see in the kingdom of their father, we're thinking it's heaven, right? Heaven, they will shine in heaven. We find out that earth is the kingdom of God. And scripture tells us that there'll be a, there'll, at the end of the age, there'll be a new earth and a new heaven. Who's going to be on the new earth? You. Me. If we're in Christ. All right, so that's what we see there. Question to ask yourself, am I a good seed? Am I a good seed? You know, many times, right, when we hear messages or when hear the word comes, we are, you know, and, and you will hear me say this over because I think this is so important. We constantly think of other people. Or we are thinking, oh, they just, no, 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 it is for you. Uh, you got to ask yourself that question. It doesn't matter what your neighbor does. It doesn't matter what anybody else around you does. All that matters is, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Yes or no? It's that simple. Now, let's continue and let's see what Christ says further. Let's look at verse 44. It says, the kingdom of heaven. Now, Christ has just said this now. He expounds even more. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field. It's, it's hiding in the corner. It's, 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 you you got to dig for it, or you got to find it. It says, which a man found and covered it up. <laughs> the man found the treasure and was like, whoa. Uh-oh. I'm not going to let anybody else have this. Then his joy, then in his joy, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and what buys the field. So here's the thing, right? I want you to, because this, this short parable, but so important. Look at how Christ breaks this down. He says, the kingdom of heaven. Now, we know the kingdom of heaven is not a small thing. But it says, the kingdom of heaven, he said, it's like treasure hidden in the field. The field in itself is not the treasure. He says, the treasure is hidden in the field. But what does the man do? The man does not go and try to take the treasure because he doesn't own the field. Right? Because if he... Whoever owns the field, that treasure belongs to them. That is their treasure. So what does he do? He buys the entire field. He sells everything that he has because he wants the entire field because of the treasure in the field. Are you following me? Are you following me? Ah, I beg, follow me. <laughs> All right. So he sees that treasure as so important that he goes and he sells what? All that he had. All that he has, he sells everything to just buy that field because the treasure there is more valuable than all that he has. So question for you. Have you sold all that you've had for the kingdom? Are you willing to sell all that you have for the kingdom? Are you willing to let go of all that you have for the kingdom? Do you see the treasure that it is? Do you see the treasure? Or are you blinded to the treasure that has been offered? Now let's look at verse 45. Let's continue. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. So he's looking for fine. Now, you know pearls, you know, depending, you know, they could be very expensive. It says, who on finding, look at it. It says, one pearl, one, of great value, 
went and sold all that he had and what? Bought it. So this guy is looking for pearls, right? He's searching. So he has seen different pearls. And he finds this one pearl of great value. And he sells everything that he has to buy it. Now, for those that know investment, right? That sounds like a beautiful investment. Wonderful investment. Why? Because if that pearl is worth everything that you have, right? It's worth something. You know? If you... If you if someone came to you today and said, hey, all that you have in your house and your car and whatever, I want everything from you and I'll give you $2 million. Some of us, everything we have is not up to $2 million. Most of us, let's never see some. <laughs> we'll give everything that we have. Oh, you know what? Yeah, take the house, take the car, da-da-da. You know, I don't even own the house. It's a rental, so you can have it. Give me my $2 million. Why? Because with the $2 million, you can buy everything that you just... You just gave. So what we are seeing here is, now I want you to understand, that same pearl to someone that does not understand the value is just what? A pearl. It might just be a pearl. To that person, it might not have the same value. Why? Because they don't see it. It comes down to what you see. The field that Jesus is speaking about, that treasure has been there. And there might have been a lot of people that have gone to that field and never found the treasure. So, why would they buy a field when they never found the treasure? Until you know the value of the kingdom of heaven, you will not trade everything for it. You can say you will, but you will not do it. Because the value has not occurred to you yet. Everything Christ is talking about is not just someone that was taught something. It's someone that discovered. I want you to hear it. Not someone that was just taught. Someone that what? Discovered. They found out themselves. They knew for themselves. It's funny how Jesus says, you shall know the truth and the truth will what? Set you free. Not how he keeps saying, no, you have to know for yourself. Until you discover the value you will not trade everything for it. All right, now let's look at verse 47. Let's round up um, this with the parable he gives here. <laughs> well, okay, let's look at this. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven. Now, Christ, now, I want you to see that all, every parable he has given here is... They are all together. They're not separate because he runs up the parable by going to the first parable he gives. By going to the first parable he gives, or the first parable we read, because he also gave a parable of the sower, which is similar too. But here's what he says. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that is thrown into the sea. Okay? He says, and gathered fish of every kind. So the net is thrown out to everybody. <laughs> it gathers every kind. It's pulled in. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers and threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fairy friends. In that place, they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Notice how Christ goes back to reiterate this thing. That this is not a joke. I didn't just say that as a bar. I didn't just say that to be, to, to be articulate. I'm letting you understand, this is what will happen. Now, unless you're willing to trade everything for the kingdom, then you got to ask yourself, am I the good seed or am I the weed? Because we know that Christ says the kingdom of heaven is like this. You find a treasure, you sell everything to get the treasure. The pearl, you sell everything to get the pearl. The one thing they have in common is everything goes for that one treasure. Now, if you're not doing that, are you the seed or the wheat? Or are you the seed or the weed? All right, 51 says, have you understood all these things? So let's just run up this passage. They said to him, yes. 
And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out his treasures that is new. What is, it brings out his treasure, what is new, and what is old. That one by itself is a, it's a whole message. Um, You know, you know I, I said I was going to tell you what wits are for also, right? They're also used for noodles. Yeah, yeah they're used for noodles and, uh, you know, and, and stuff of that caliber. I was trying to remember. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, what is, what is that thing called? Uh, okay. So the point is, at the end of the day, um, each one of us, we have to ask ourselves, what do I value? What do I value? What is, what, is, what is my value system based upon? Is this a form of morality that the world has given? Or is it a surrender to the Spirit of God, trading everything for the treasure that is the kingdom of heaven? Remember, the good seed are the sons of the kingdom. The good seed are those that have let go. That is the good seed. But here is what's interesting about the good seed, brothers and sisters. The good seed will grow with the bad. The good seed will try to be distracted by the bad. The good seed will try to be polluted by the bad. False people will come in your midst. To tell you to stop looking onto Jesus. The world will scream. There will be so much distraction for those that are truly saved. But here is the beautiful thing about that message. I want you to understand that it is not accidental. God is not reacting. He knows what is happening and he's there to sustain each one of you if you are truly in Christ. And if you're not, you have an opportunity to trade everything that you have for treasure, true treasure. Because the things that we have in this world, they are here today and they are gone tomorrow. They are here today and they are gone tomorrow. If you want to do an experiment, right? Do this. Do this. If you have a little child close to you, depending on their age, a little child that doesn't understand money, give them $2 in $1 bills individually, right? And tell them that they can use it to buy whatever they want. Come back later and have $10 with you and try to trade it for the $2. Most children will not. Most children will not. Now, if a child, if you've trained a child to be <laughs> more humble <laughs> and to surrender their rights, yeah, they would do it, but they would do it begrudgingly. Okay, yeah, sure. Why? Because to them, the $2 is more than the $10 because they don't understand the difference of value. That's how most of us are. We think more is more. We think, oh, look at all the things the world has. Look at that, that, that. That's what we're looking at. And the simplicity of the gospel is not enough. The simplicity of Jesus is not enough. We want all the shiny things that the world has to offer. And Christ is saying, follow me. Follow me. Let's pray. Um, I want us to just pray. Uh, this is an opportunity if you, if you know that your relationship with God is not where it should be, or if you don't know Jesus, this is the time to make that prayer. This is the time to make that prayer. This is the time to make that prayer. Just pray. If you don't have a relationship with God, just ask the Lord to come into your heart and change you. Change you. Change your mindset. Change your, change your perspective. Change your personality. Change whatever he needs to change for his glory. You are willing to trade everything for him. Now, if you are in Christ, 
and you know you've not surrendered everything. There are things that you've held close to you, things that are in pockets of your life, things that are hidden in corners that you don't want to give the Lord because you're afraid of what he would do with them. Lord, if I give you this, I don't want you to take it away from me. Offer them to God now. Give them to him. Go into that pocket, open the door, and tell him to take it. Tell him to take it. The treasure he has for you is greater than the little things you are holding on to. All the things you hold on to will fade away. Every single thing. Doesn't matter what it is. The treasure he has for you will never fade. It will never die. But it's left for you to give it to him. He will not come down and forcefully take it. But you have to offer it. You must offer it to him. So if you know you want to offer him your, your treasures, just give it to him now. Tell him to take it. Sometimes our treasures become burdens to us. His burden is easy and his yoke is light. But we hold on to all the treasures and all the things we want to hold on to. All the things that we think make us we. And he's saying, give them up now. I have a greater treasure for you. The weed among us will tell you that that is your treasure. That is what the weed is supposed to do. But Christ says that is not it. That is not it. That is not it. Your treasure is far greater than this. You just don't know it. You think what you are holding is valuable. I tell you it is not. I tell you it is not. It is of no value to me. But I have true value I want to give you. So take it. Trade what you have for what he has. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your good. We thank you for your merciful. Father, we thank you for your word today. We know it is for someone. I know it is for me. I thank you. I ask you, Father, that this word, that you allow it to grow in our hearts this week. That we will not just listen and walk away and remain the same. We said, Heaven, Father, help us to grow in your word. That we will constantly trade. Trade what we have for what you have offered us. We thank you, Father, for we know you are the true treasure. For in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray.